got one question. Who ate beans for supper? Yeah. You know which side of the church we need to keep the lights on. Smile. That's supposed to be funny. All right. That's right. Hey, we love you. Appreciate you being with us tonight. On Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, we come over here. We just started just this week. And uh, if everybody wants to, we'll keep on going with it. As long as it ain't a burden, we don't want nobody to have to burden themselves. It wasn't too hard. Pick some little bowls of soup or whatever. We had all kinds of things out there. So if you want to be part of that, come up a little bit early on Wednesday nights. We're going to keep on doing that. And help people that are getting off late from work. They can just come right on over to church and eat. And come right on into the house of God. Let's worship. All right. Anybody have any prayer requests tonight before we get started? Remember David and his daughter and my cousin Wayne Brown. He's pretty bad health. And my friend down in Georgia, his wife, has several problems. He was, he's been my best friend at work for 26 years. And I told him that I'd keep on turning in prayer for her. And I, I appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Remember Tina Roberts. She said she was in private economy and stuff. Had surgery last night. Anyone else? Let's serve. Yes, my neighbor. Anyone 
people tonight remember at the youth building everything that we're doing trying to pay that thing down pay it off get it fixed so let's be much in prayer for all of that of we'll do the possible got to do the impossible mm -hmm. Amen. he's mary wilson so they It's an altar. Let's start off on the altar of prayer tonight. <laughs>
Colossians chapter number 1. 
Colossians chapter number 1, we'll look at verse number 6 and also verse number 10. I preached last Wednesday night on the taters. Everybody knows all about the taters, don't you? If you're a country person, you know what the taters are. We know the ones not to be, amen? The first one we talked about was spectator, amen? That's the one sitting on the sidelines watching everything that's going on and not getting involved. There's something about getting involved where the blessings of God really lie. It's when you get involved and do something for God. Don't always just be sitting there and watching everything else and seeing what's going on and see how everything's going. We're supposed to be involved in these things. Number two, we saw imitators. We saw the person that watches everybody but also acts like everybody. Even though she may not have it in her heart or he may not have it in his heart, he's acting like everybody else. That's just the way they act. Well, i got to do the same thing. A lot of times you go to noisy churches, you got to shout and praise the Lord like they do. I shout, hey, in Catholic churches, amen? amen? I haven't been asked to come back, and I probably won't get to, say amen. But you know what? There's been times we need to realize imitators not the one we need to be either. We don't need to imitate somebody else. The Bible said it ought to come from your heart. Number three, we saw dictator, and he is not welcome in this church, is he? No, no, no. I said dictator is not welcome in this church, is he? No. Thank you. He's not welcome because there's no dictatorship in the kingdom of God. Amen. God is the only one that calls all the shots. Amen? And we need to realize that. He knows it all. He does it all. And he's always the boss. Amen? I count on him. There's a, he's the only one we can count. Number four, I want you to realize with me the fourth person was Adji. Everybody knows Adji, don't you? Yeah. Surely you have never been there. Have you been an agitator? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It don't matter what you're for. They're against it. It don't matter what's right or what's wrong. They're going to do their own things. Amen. But you know what? Maybe the agitator. We don't need to be that one. But what about number five? I'm telling you, we don't definitely don't need to be this one. How about old Rotten Tater? Oh, my goodness. There he is again. That old boy smells. Amen. Yeah. I had to say that. I had to. I've been on the women a lot lately. I said, man, i got to preach on the men tonight. What about the Rotten Tater? Amen. It's a poisonous herb you find in the Hosea. Chapter 10, verse number 4, it talks about a poisonous herb in the field. When they planted their seed, there was something there that was killing the crop. It was called a rotten tater. Say that. Something was rotten there. You go in the grocery store, you walk inside that back door the minute you walk in, you know exactly if one's in there, don't you? <laughs> You'll know exactly if there's a rotten tater there. And what does that rotten tater do? He'll ruin two or three others around him too. Say man, It's the truth. That's what happens. But number six, I want you to realize number six, I want to be that. It's sweet tater. The final product of meeting Jesus Christ. I want to be a sweet tater. Yeah. I want to be that one that's always nice and always kind. Even when you're driving, amen? In bad traffic. Even when something <laughs> happens in your life that you can't put your finger on. You can't do nothing about. Problems happen in your life. We still need to be a sweet tater. But last but not the least was loaded tater. Hey, everybody likes that one, don't they? I need to be a loaded tater. Loaded in the right way, say amen right there. In Galatians 5, 22 through 26, it's talking about the spirit of that loaded tater. Yeah. I need to have every one of those yeah. gifts of the spirit of God in my life every time that I turn around. But now let's talk about some products that come out of all those tabers. Number one, what about old tater tot? Amen? What about that little bitty papella? Amen? Nobody ever plays that much attention to him. Nobody ever looks and that. He don't make a whole lot of noise, not like the preacher. Come on. Amen? He don't make a lot of noise. Maybe he don't do a lot of things that we notice. But I want you to realize that tater tot is just as important as anybody Amen. else. Amen? If I was to go outside and bring one of those children in here and bring them up here and give them a, a microphone and ask them to quote John 3.16 to you or read it off the Bible, what would you do? Would you just sit there and yep. listen? Say, oh, wasn't that sweet? I would shout just like I would if it was somebody standing behind the pulpit screaming and yelling. Say, man, I've seen people scream and yell at a pastor or a preacher when they're preaching but whenever somebody else gets up, it's all quiet. Uh, that ain't 
Hey, it's the same scripture. It don't matter who reads it. It don't matter who quotes it. It don't matter if they can quote it. The Bible said, what about tater tot? Realize what tater tot does. He's small. He's little. He don't have a big name in the church. But honey, he's still part of it. Say man. He's the one that gets cut up. What does that tater tot look like when you buy it in the store? It's been cut up. It's been chopped up. It's been thrown in a deep fryer and fried. Then let me tell you, how many times have you felt that way? How many times have you been felt like that you've been cut up and turned into the... Hey, each and every one of us could say tonight, I feel like tater tot sometimes. I feel like I'm still sitting in the fire and the flames of this world, the problems of this life. But listen, we can be delivered from that today. Realize the after product of that tater tot after he goes through the fire. Sometimes we got to go through the fires of life and the problems of life before the thing really happens in our life that really makes us good. Amen? I guarantee you one thing, I wouldn't want that thing out of the freezer, would you? No. I wouldn't want one fresh. Amen? I want it to be cooked before I put it in my mouth, don't you? Hey, you got to be put through the fires of life, the problems of life that we're faced with every day. You know what we do? We sit back and say, God, I can't take it. You're going to have to help me with this one. How many times did we ask God to help us? Get me out of this thing. God might have put you in the flame for a reason. He yeah. might have put you in that thing for a problem. Hey, there's a process that God works with. Come on now. Sometimes. We try to rush it along. Hey, Lord, hurry up and get me out of this one. Amen. I, this has been a hard one. This has been a tough one. That's what happened to Tater Todd. Hey, what about old mashed Tater? Everybody likes him, don't you? Just about everybody I know eats mashed potato. What do you do with a mashed potato? First thing you do is you get down and skin him. Amen. You skin him. How many spell like they've been skinned just this week alone in the problems that you're going through? Sometimes I feel like in life that I get skinned with that open potato pillar and y'all that old ugly dead skin. I said ugly dead skin off of it. Sometimes that's a good thing. And for mashed potato, it's an exactly perfect thing. I need all that dead skin removed off my life. Hey, what else happens to him? He goes through the knife blade. He gets cut up into pieces, don't he? Sometimes small pieces. And man, that's rough. How many times have you felt that way in your life? That you've been cut into a million pieces. But thank God, there's an after product that comes. Hey, you may have felt like you've been through it all. I've been through the flame of hell, preacher. I've gone through some things that I don't even want to talk about. I've been through some things in my life that I don't want to discuss. But I'm telling you, maybe that was a process God needed to make you the mashed potato that you need to be. I said tato, didn't I? I said tater, amen? We're on the tater family today. But what about that mashed tater? After he comes out of the boiling pot, he's got to go through the boiling pot. He's got to go through the same heat little tater tot went through. He's got to go through the same flame of this world. The same problems of life. Sometimes we go through problems of life. And I've got stood back many a time saying, Lord, why does Christians go through so many hard things yeah. in their life? Sometimes that's the process of growing in the Lord. Right. Same man. Sometimes that's the reason Listen, we don't turn out like we need to be. We're afraid to get around the fire. We're afraid to be bold. I, listen, and I'm the first to take. I don't want to get bored alive just like that frog. Then you realize you can put a frog in water and you can turn the heat up and no I haven't tried it so don't look funny at me. Amen? But you can put that frog in water and turn that heat up just a little out of time. Do you know he won't get out of that water? You turn that water up and get it hot and boiling and drop it. Honey he'll jump out of that pot. Wonder what it is. That slowly and gradually slowly and yeah. gradually hey that's the way we need to be boiled sometimes. Boil me a little slower Lord, I know I'm slow. I'm a smith. I'm hard headed. And the church said, amen. "You better not say amen right there." Amen. Hey, I've got news for you today. What about that old mashed potato? He's been boiled. It's not over yet for you. He's been boiled. He's been cut. He's been stripped. It's not over yet. Then all of a sudden, after you get out of the heat, you put in a cool bowl. And all of a sudden, you think, "Boy, thank God." I'm out of that. And all of a sudden you hear a noise in the background of that little beater when you turn it on to match those little taters up just a little bit smaller. You been there? I'm not talking about the old fashioned one. You don't do that no more, do you? If you do, amen, God bless you. You got some good arms, say that right there. But you know what? How many times you gotta realize when you come back to that day, he's gotta be mashed up and mashed out. Hey, 
That's what I'm talking about. The final product is when you give that thing out and nobody gives you thanks for what That's you did. Lord. Yeah. That's it, Lord. You done all that work to that tailor. Sometimes you feel like that's your life, that your life is going through exactly the same things that I'm talking about right now. But my goodness, think about the final product when it's dipped out on that plate and somebody puts it up to their mouth and takes that first bite. Think about it. Would you? That's why he said, hey, taste of the Lord and see that he is gracious. Hey, people ought to be able to test test of our spirit the same yeah. way. I don't know about you, but somebody needs to see Jesus Christ in my life every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. Sometimes we fail. Sometimes we falter. Sometimes we don't make the mark. But I'm telling you, I need to do more for my God. Amen. Amen. Number three, what about that old fried tater? Oh my goodness. What about that old fried tater? Sometimes you can leave his skin on. Thank God for that. I get to keep the skin. But all of a sudden, here comes the knife. Here we go right back under the same knife that all these others have gone under. The same problems that go through your life and the same problems that you're faced with sometimes on a daily basis. Hey, it feels like I've been mutilated and cut up so many times. One time right after another and it seems like I get through one thing and all of a sudden here comes another one before I get done. Hey, think about this for me today. What about old fried tater? Oh, everybody likes to talk about him. Don't you make fun of my fried taters or we can't be friends no more. Smile on that one. But you know what? Oh, fried tater had to go under the knife. Yep. Oh, preacher, I'm done. I made it through that one. I think I'm going to be all right. Oh, honey, the best is yet to come. Come on, brother. All of a sudden you hear something boiling in the background. Something going on really loud and bubbling behind you. What is it? It ain't over yet, honey. So don't start crying too early because it's fixing to get a little rougher, amen? And then all of a sudden you drop down in the boiling pot of hot oil and all of a sudden you realize that wasn't so bad getting cut up after all. Now I'm in the oil and now I'm being burnt. I don't know about you, but hey, what about that old fried tater? Hey, listen, the fire did not get him. He was cut in pieces. He was turned inside out, practically turned inside out. That's what I'm talking about today. Sometimes, don't you feel that way? Don't you feel like that you've been through all these troubles and these trials today? What about a baked tater? What about a baked tater? You ain't got much on him, do you? Oh, yeah. He's the one that gets to leave the skin on. Whew. Didn't get cut the first time around. Whew. But all of a sudden, they put you in the oven. And they slow bake you. Are you listening? They slow bake you. Maybe they wrap some aluminum foil on you. And wrap you all up tight in a little package. And throw you on a flame of fire. Amen. Hey, have you ever been there? Have you been thrown straight into the flame? I know three Hebrew boys that were. They, hey, we're not going to bow down to the king. We're not going to worship the king. I don't care what you do or what you say. God said just coach, hey, stand your ground and don't give an in. Hey, stand up for God. Be strong in the yeah. Lord and courageous in his mind. Three little Hebrew boys did that. And they said, we're not bowing down to the king. Hey, we only have one king and yeah. his name is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. That's the only one I'm going to bow to. And that's what he told them that day. Guess what they did? They heated the furnace ten times hotter than it ever was. And what happened? They threw him in. Oh, bad story. No, good story. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way to the end of the world. You know what he did? He crawled in the fire with them. Hey, they were standing outside. Oh, that fire wasn't that hot. Really? All the men that threw them in died right there on the outside. They wasn't even on the inside in the fire. They was on the outside, and they died a horrible death. You ever been burnt? Yeah. Badly burnt? I'm not talking about my little burns right on the end of my pinky. You know? Oh, I'm not going to live another day because I look. I'm talking about a serious burn on your body. Oh, brother. You know what it takes to come through that? Yeah. These three Hebrew boys. They trusted their God. 
And God delivered them. Amen. The Bible said one man looked in. He said, did we not cast three in? Yeah, we only cast three men in. He said, I see a fourth man walking. And it looks to be like the son of the living God. Hey, and it was. God said, I will go with you. Even if you get thrown in the flame. Even if you get thrown in the ocean. Even if your boat sink. I'll be right there with Amen. you no matter what. Amen. So no matter what, they don't make table. Let's go back and talk to you about him a minute. He's cooked slow. Oh, I don't feel, it don't feel too bad. Right now I'm about to sweat to death. If it gets any hotter, I'm going to feel like I'm in the flames. Smile, that's supposed to be funny. How many times have we been there? How many times? Slowly but surely, we get adjusted to it. Until all of a sudden it gets so bad we can't take it anymore. That's what happens to the bait tater. He'll get in there. He don't get peeled. He don't get cut. He don't get touched. Hey, he gets wrapped up in a lunar foil or thrown on the flame with that old skin on. Say man. He gets thrown straight in. Sometimes you cook him slow. Sometimes you cook him bad. But either way, he'll still get baked. Amen. Either way you look at it today, he goes through the problems of life like everybody else. How about Tater Salad? Are you hungry? I ain't hungry. I ate before I came to church. That's my old saying right there. I'm not too hungry right now. There's a few beans still rolling around in there, amen? They're bouncing from one side to the other, and they're coming way up here. No, I'm okay. I'll let them go. But anyway, realize what old, hey, what old tater salad's going through. The Bible said he gets cut into many pieces. He just keeps getting chopped. Do you ever felt that way? You ever felt like the problems of life are cutting on you every day? It seems like you go through and go through and go through things and problems in your life. But hey, the final product that you get with tater salad, you throw those things in there with it. Throw a little mashed potato, mashed potato. Throw a little bit of mayonnaise in there. Throw a little bit of mustard in there. Hey, throw some onion in. Oh, man. I know you're getting hungry now, ain't you? I'm starting to. Amen. Or my belly's growling for some reason. But think about old tater salad. Think about the final product. Don't look at the circumstance that I'm going through in my life. Don't look at what I'm faced with right now. Look at the final product of what God's doing in your Amen. life. And you'll realize God needs you no matter who you are today. No matter how big you are. How small you are. I'm talking about your name. You don't have to have a name that everybody knows. Honey, hey, you just call it a him or a her. Hey, sometimes nobody's ever called your name. But realize you're important to God. Amen, brother. All of these people broke down. In Colossians 1, 6, it says, Which is coming to you, as in all the world, bringeth forth fruit. The most important part of it all. Come on, brother. Sometimes you go through some things to be the fruit of God. Amen. It's not always going to be an easy road. It's not always going to be pretty. It's not always going to be fun. But I'll tell you, it's always going to be worth it. Amen. Amen. It's going to be worth it when you give your life to God. Amen. And God uses you for His honor and glory. Yeah. Next one, last but not the least. What about old Hash Brown? Come on, brother. Everybody likes hash brown. Cut him up, mix him up in small pieces, and then grab something and try to mash him all back together. Whew. You ever felt that way? I feel that way sometimes in my life. I feel like I'm still in a million pieces, laying on the ground. But thank God I got a God that can do this right here. <laughs> he can scoop all those pieces up and put it all back together. Honey, make me a hash brown. I don't care. Make me what you want to make me, God. Whatever it is, I know the final product will be for his honor and his glory. What I'm doing today is for the honor and the glory of God. The only way this ain't going to work for me or work for you is to be a tater hater. Have you ever heard of that one? That's a good one, too. Hey, you don't want to be the tater hater around here. You do? You ain't gonna fit in very well. You don't like casserole. You don't like them boil. You don't like them fried. You better find a way to like them or we'll get something with it. Say that. Hey, sometimes you got to have something mixed with that tater. Come on, brother. Yeah. A diabetic can't have taters. Really? That's what the doctor said. I beg your pardon. <laughs> ain't that what you say? I beg your pardon. I don't care what the... I didn't ever eat sweets, asked my wife. I never touched sweets. 
I ain't all good food. That doctor looked at me between my two beady eyes, smile on that one. He looked at me right here in my beady eye, and he said, you are not going to eat sweets anymore. Yep. <laughs> really? You really believe that, don't you? Well, when you follow me home, you'll find out I'm not obeying the rules of the doctor. Say that. Hey, what about that tater hater? Hate him all you want to. Just because he's been me. Hey, he's been minced. He's been chopped. He's been boiled. He's been broiled. He's been fried. He's been through the ringer and back. He's been through all these things in his life. Hey, don't be a hater. Tater hater. I about said hater tater. I'm about to leave my wife to give this up. I'm about to lose it. But you know what? The Bible says. You've got to have four things. Number one, you've got to have water. You've got to have water. For your cooking and growing. Hello! I can't even yell good at myself. He said, you've got to have water for growing. Then you've got to have water for boiling, for cooking time. I don't mind the growing part, say amen. I don't mind that until it starts flooding. How many times have we said that? On, Man, I wish you'd quit raining. Yeah. That might have been when God needed you to be the most wet. Amen. That might have been when God really needed you to get a little saturated wet and not be afraid of water. Oh, yeah. Amen. I don't need to be afraid of water. It don't matter how it comes at me. There's something about that water that helps that tater grow. It also will help the final product of that tater before it lands on the plate. For the one to enjoy eating. Yep. I don't know about you, but we need the water. Number two, we need salt. Mark chapter 9, 49, 450 says, What was salt without savor? You lost your flavor. I'm sorry, but sometimes you just gotta have salt. Amen. Yeah. Doctor put you on cholesterol medicine for a reason, didn't he? <laughs> he told you not to eat salt for a reason, didn't he? Or she. Yeah. But you know what? But he don't know, and she don't know more her. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to have a little bit. Amen? Yeah. Hey, pepper won't do. I like pepper too, and I put it on there anyway. But that's not a substitute for salt. Yeah. If salt has lost its savor, praise God, we need to get it back. Whatever yeah. it takes. Yeah. That's part of the kingdom of God as well. Right. I need to be what God wants me to be. Let me hurry this thing along. Number three, we got to have oil. Does anybody want to tell me the symbol of oil? The Holy Ghost of God, that's what. That's the symbol, amen, of oil. I need him all the time. Put me right in the middle of the boiling pot amen. full of the Holy Ghost. Hey, I'll be all right in that boiling pot, say amen. I don't care how small I've been cut up. I'll be all right in that one. Amen. Because I know he's there. I know he's with me. Just like those three Hebrew boys. They brought them out of that flame, standing right in front of them. Mm -hmm. I don't even smell smoke. I don't even smell fire upon their clothing. Not, a, not one little thing on that camel hair was singed. Nothing was singed on their body. Amen. That long, flowing Greek hair, it was still just like it was when they put it. It might have grew an inch or two on the inside. Man. Why? Because they were in the presence of God. Jehovah God was right there in the midst of them. That'll make you grow yeah. Yeah. in more ways than one, being in the presence of Jehovah. But last but not least, what about the heat? Oh, Lord, turn that off. Lord, it's getting hot. It's getting hot in my life. God, there's some things I've been going through lately. I just don't know. I just don't know if I'm going to make it. I just don't know if I'm going to make it. Sometimes that heat's good for you. Yes, right. Sometimes we need a little bit of that heat to wake us up Amen. and realize how good it is. Amen. Hey, we need to be heated up a little bit for the kingdom of God. I need to get a fire. Jeremiah said there's a fire shut up in my bone. You didn't know I, was, I had those scriptures laid out to be preached with this message, did you? Hey, Jeremiah said there's a fire shut up in my bone. I cannot contain. Thank God I want that fire. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. That's the yes. kind of fire he's talking about. Amen. Right here. Number four things. There's a knife. There's a potato peeler. 
that's looking for you. Oh, there it is. Oh, Lord, I don't know which way I'm going with this one. We don't know which way it's going. I don't know how it's going to work out. Hey, there's a bowling pot full of hot water. Are you ready? Come on, brother. Oh, <laughs> preacher, we've gone through enough. We sure have. We've grown through a lot. But you look in my beady eyes tonight and tell me you didn't grow somehow. That's right. Amen. In some way, everything that you've been through in your life. Yeah. Tell me you didn't Amen. grow. If you did it for God, God helps you grow. Amen. That's where you get that final product of that potato. Hey, it don't just happen. You don't just look at it and say, boy, that's one of the ugly. I'm sure when the Indians first picked it out, they used to eat them raw. And you know what? It says if you eat too many of them raw tater skin, it'll make you a little uh, up here a little crazy. I think some of us have been eating some. I used to eat them raw, I'll tell you. I eat some raw. There's nothing wrong with me. Amen. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Amen. But God has a purpose for everything. Amen. Yes. Everything that we're going through. Yep. So maybe when you say, I want out of that, you're saying, Lord, I don't want to go this road anymore. Come on, brother. I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> you say, I want to be the final product that God would have me to be. I'm not worried about what the Baptist church feels. No, nope. I'm not caring about what any other denomination feels about me. What I'm worried about is what my God yeah. said Amen. about Amen. me. Amen. That's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about when I stand before him, he'll look at me and say, and point his finger at me and say, I told you to do it this way. I told you to do this. I told you to do that. And I didn't do it. I'm going to stand before God and hear those words. Welcome in, my good and faithful servant. Hey, I want to hear those words, don't you? Yeah, amen. amen. Well, let's don't bail out on God too early. Amen. Let's him lower. I'm getting close to the boiling pot. Phew, it's getting hot. I'm getting close to the knife. I can feel the blade. Say amen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting close to the potato pillar. Boy, I feel like my skin's gone now. Say amen. You've been to Florida and got that skin burnt, haven't you? What happened when you came back home? You look pretty. Had that beautiful, pretty tan. Mm -hmm. In about four days, what happened? Mm -hmm. You look like a spotted leopard. Amen. <laughs> hey, I didn't want to look like this. But you know what? There was something God was trying to get a hold of. Bless me. Lord. Yeah. Let me out of the sun too early. Maybe I should have stayed there just a little bit longer. For God. Bless you, yeah. I'm talking to you today. To keep your life where it ought to be with God. Verse 10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Three things. That's all you need. Those three things is what it's all about. Let's stay there. They'll come and get us a song ready for the invitation of Him. I know in the name of this message it might be a little small, a little funny in a little bit of a way. But is it not very serious in our life? Amen. Amen. Very serious. Mm -hmm. Because God has told each one of us what he wants us to do. Right. How many of us has been exactly who we should have been every time? Yep. That's the point. He's wanting us there all the time yep. for a purpose. I want out early for him about water gets hot. I want out early before I get, especially get to the chopping block. Say amen. amen. We don't like that chopping block. Sometimes we ask to leave a little too early. Yep. God, whatever's in my will. Amen. 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 The most important prayer that you will ever pray in God's will. Amen. God's yes. will be done amen. in my amen. life. That's what we need to pray. Stand with me all over the house. Every head bowed and eye closed. <laughs> Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, most holy God. God, you know our hearts are not with anything. We know that, God, we fall short so many times. So many times, God, in our life, we cut short. Your hand and bless you upon our life. God, I don't want to sell myself short. God, I want the true blessing that only you can give. And you can only give it for the final part of what you want me to be. Lord, help me. Endure all the way to the end, whatever that it takes to come.
I appreciate you. Hope you got a blessing out of the message. I just want you to smile a little bit. Yes, sir. And I want you to see how serious it was. Too. Amen, brother. It's serious because it's true. Every bit of it was true. Right down to every little thing. Sometimes we go through things and don't understand. God does. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Just trust Amen. in God's will tonight. Yes. He'll take care of you through it all. Anybody that can this coming Saturday, we could use some help. If you get up early, <clears throat> even if you don't, to Saturday be a good day for you to get up early mm. and come down and help us at the car show. Mm. Saturday, we need all the help. Mm. We're showing Green Pond Baptist Church's name. Mm. You want to come and be part of that? Amen. Brag on your church a little yeah. while. Come and be part of that and help us out. It's all for the building. Every dime, every penny that we make to that thing goes to that building. Amen. Thank God you see all the kids that's out here tonight. Yes. It's looking so good. Yes. Let's just keep on playing. Yes. And God yes. just keep adding to that building. <laughs> yes. God will keep on adding children to this place. Yes. It's all about him, isn't it? Amen. He'll be the increase. Let's do our possible. He said, I'll do the impossible. Yes. So let's trust him with that. Yes. Trust him. It's a blessing yes. when Valerie normally brings to Kenny. That same eagerness in the house of God. I want to be there. Amen. Yes. I don't want to miss anything. Because yes. if you miss it, yes. you might catch it the next go around. Yes. But you still miss this one. Yes. Amen. Love you. Appreciate you. Have a good week this week. Yes. Be much in prayer and all the things that are coming up. A lot of things that are happening. The 24th, Sunday school class meeting. The 31st, we're having a thing out here for the kids. Coming up in November, I've got a lot of things coming up. Soup and soup, soup, soup and sandwich supper. I'll get that right. Cornbread. 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 Wait, well, same thing. As long as you bring the Mexican cornbread, we'll call it what you want to call it. Same That's right. Yeah. You must eat too many raw taters. I ain't a lot of raw taters when I was looking. I ate raw okra. Yeah, a little bit of tiny pollens, all that hair on them. I've ate them. Maybe that's what's wrong with you. <laughs> Pray for that preacher over there at Green Pond. He's been eating a lot of raw groceries. <laughs> Something wrong with that boy's brain. <laughs> I love you too. If you ain't ate, ate raw okra, then you ain't country. That's right. I love you. I appreciate you, church. I hope and pray that you have a good week. If you're going through the fire, if you're going through the now, if you're going through the pillar, be ready. God's got you. Amen. He's getting you prepared. <coughs> Let's do everything we can for the kingdom. Amen. That's all I was saying. I love you. Right. Have a good week this week. Brother Harold, could you dismiss our service, please, sir? Praise the Lord, we'll come through tonight. Yes. We lean heavy upon you with yes. many burdens. Yes. We know that there's problems we'll never have, but we know you're always God to help us. You said in your word, you'll never leave us. We thank you for being so yes. good to us, yes. for being the Lord of our lives.